Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Hello. Good to have you here. Paul Shiny here. I'm happy to have Shanti Sparrow in the house right next to me. Yay. Happy to be here again for day two. Day two. I'm happy to have you here as well. Feel free to chime in and chat. Make sure you can see us and hear us loud and clear. This is day two. I think what you did yesterday was really awesome. Thank you. And I'm excited for day two. So yeah, me too. Into... Let's turn this into a proper editorial. That's right. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you want have any opening words. I was just going to dive into it and also say that we're going to uh, be doing a, a challenge review about uh, in about 90 minutes, but we have you for two hours and mm -hmm. it's part of a full day of, of fun stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I will share that schedule with you guys in a little bit. But yeah, I think I'll just turn it over to your lovely yeah, no screen problems. of blue. Yeah, yeah, my, my day ah. screen. So I'm going to just jump back over to the brief just so that, you know, if you weren't with us yesterday, you can have a little bit of context. But if you were just a refresher. Um, yeah, so we're doing the second edition of this Woodstock, uh, sorry, of the mo most important moments in music magazine. Uh, last time we did the Woodstock edition, this time we're doing good old glam rock. Uh, you know, in general, there's some specs here. There's the actual uh, article itself, but you can have a look in more detail on this on the stream from yesterday. We're up to day two on this plan. So we're in InDesign, which is the best. And we're going to be hopefully looking at some type pairing, redefining, editing par paragraph styles, pacing, type finesse, and presentation if we get there. There's some research that you can go and have a look at, but just in general, this is glam rock. This is the mood board of references we had. And we have already done quite a bit of planning. So I'm going to refer to this page a few times throughout the brief, so I might just leave it here. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and those that, that, that type lockup was really cool. Uh, I think today you're going to focus on InDesign. Yes, yeah. And so, I don't know, it's always yeah, so I don't know if you're going to have Illustrator open at all, but I think people would want to take a, a peek under the hood at that illustration you did yesterday. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. We can definitely open up Illustrator again. Um, let's have a look what we've got. So just a reminder of the, the illustrations themselves. So this is the collection. Illustrator might just be opening up, so we'll let that just take its little second. And this was cool because you did uh, three different illustrations yesterday mm -hmm. uh, at varying levels of complexity. In fact, it went from simple to like much more complex, but you knocked out those <laughs> those boots pretty fast too. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah, I think the scale was boots to Elton John was the complexity. Uh, I can definitely just show people from yesterday what, what we were working on. So yeah. here we have a few more that are prepared. So this is for the for the back. We have um, Joan Jett here, Alice Cooper, um, Brian Ferry from Roxy Music. We have Slade Bowie, which is the one we were able to do live. Uh, we've got T-Rex and Elton John. We also were able to do live together. And this was the front. So they're the illustrations that we'll be working with today to build it out. And this is it in Illustrator. So really, really simple. It was just making some shapes of some photos. We used a bunch of pattern shapes, uh, sorry, pattern swatches that are built into Illustrator to, to build on top of them and increase that complexity in the design. And here they all are. So maybe I can scooch on over. I don't have my front cover one in here, but um, I can open that up as we're making it and have a look at that, that type package. But yeah, so this is what we were working on yesterday. And if you want to see all of those little details, head on over to day one. Very cool. And I noticed, yeah, you add, you've added to it as well. So it's cool seeing those additional illustrations. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're going for a 16 page booklet today. So it's quite long and we may not finish the 16 pages. That's OK. But um, the article itself was quite lengthy and I needed it to breathe, so I added more pages. Very cool. Okay, so we're going to just jump into InDesign today. So I'll minimize this. Let's open InDesign. 
I did notice yesterday on the forum, there were a lot of people saying, you know, they were looking forward to the InDesign day because maybe they don't know how it works or they're a little new to it. And that, that's, you know, absolutely great. For me, I'm in InDesign 80% of the time as a commercial designer. This is where I, you know, fix and solve problems. It's how I figure out brands. It's how I, you know, do appeals and, and all of those sorts of things. So I, I do a lot of problem solving within InDesign. So it's maybe the thing I'm the most comfortable in. So we're gonna go with Command N just to get going and start our uh, editorial. So just give it a second. I'm gonna do the, like, as if you've never walked in, I'm gonna introduce a little bit of InDesign in terms of setting up the file, just in case you guys haven't set up an InDesign file before. So this dialogue is gonna give us a bunch of options. There are print, web, mobile, all of those sorts of things pre-built in, which really helpful. What I'm going to be building is something that's an online zine. So I'm gonna have uh, access to those rich, beautiful RGB spectrum colors. So I'm gonna to go to web because that'll make my document color mode in RGB. Gonna pick letter because that's the size we chose. For me, I don't understand it just particularly. So I'm gonna go with millimeters so that I know what it is. You do you though. And we've got some options down here, which interesting. So I know from my plan uh, with my thumbnails that it's gonna be a 16 page document so I can write that in. And there's an option here called facing pages. I'm gonna tick it. Facing pages simply means, so if you've got a magazine and you've got one page here and one page here, and when they close, they face. So that's facing pages. If you had just a poster, you know, there isn't another side to it. So that would just be uh, unticked facing pages. It wouldn't be one. So I'm gonna say facing pages because that's how booklets work. Uh, you can set your columns and gutters here, but I'm not going to. There's margins. Maybe I'll put on bleed. You know, granted, you could always yeah. obviously like set this stuff up later too. Absolutely, right. yes. Yeah, so I'm not so worried about my columns and margins because I can come back and change it at any time. So I often leave them just with, you know, the default settings. Setting the pager numbers, that's helpful. But yeah, everything else you can kind of leave. And I might call it Glam Rock. Looks like uh, we have some um, InDesign fans, so you oh, are in good hands. Great. Welcome, guys. Yes, InDesign and Brad. Okay, let's go create. So what am I left with? Let's clean up my palettes a little bit. So I've got all of my pages here, uh, and you can zoom in, zoom out, and see them mirrored within the actual document itself. So, you know, the scariest thing for most designers is a blank page. So how do we approach this? Like, what is the first steps? You guys can approach this in any way you would like to. So you can, you know, set up your margin straight away. You can import all of your information. I have a unique scenario here. And, and I think normally I would just import all of my content, all of my assets and see what I, you know, what I was going to do from there. This time, because I've got a precedent, which I'll bring up my PDF to talk about, which is, Issue one, I need to make sure that I'm setting up the things that we've pre-decided that we're keeping so that we can get that continuation in the series. So there's a few things there, body copy, grid, page furniture, and the footer on the cover. So I'm gonna open up my last zine, which is the Woodstock edition. Here she is. Okay, so the first thing that we can bring over is the footer on the cover. So I'm just going to Command C and bring it over. Of course, when you paste white on white, you mm. cannot see it. So we might actually just put in some, an actual image for us. Which is my front cover. And send that to yeah. the back. Bam! Pretty okay. cool. <laughs> so we've got that going on. Uh, you can see that my default margins are not suiting what I've got now. So let's just, on this page, edit my margins to sit a little nicer. So I think it's somewhere around nine. Cool. So while I've got that there and I'm all zoomed in, let's just change the article content over. 
so we're up to issue number two. And the name of it is Children of the Revolution, How Glam Rock Changed the World. So we're going to paste that in there. And what we notice is that last time, because the words were so close uh, to being even, I was able to use justification to get that nice even uh, margin. That's not working for me right now. And I've got what are called rivers, where it's terrible spacing between the letters. So I don't want that uh, between the words, my, I'm sorry. So let's bring up my paragraph and let's make it left aligned. Those were called what again? Would it river? Oh, they're called rivers. Yeah. Rivers. When have, oh. When you have it start to like line up and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's, I'll, I'll bring it back. Yeah, rivers are that's happening like in there. huge like tributary or that's like the Mississippi River. There's like a <laughs> lot of space going on in there. That's exactly. all. Oh. Absolutely. So. Um, and, you know, we, we try not to do that at, um, unless you're doing it for effect. And there are yeah. moments where you are going for that effect and it makes sense to do it, but not for me right now. Okay. So I'll, I'll zoom out a little and press W just to look at it. And I think it's a little strange that it doesn't, you know, fill. So I have options here where I could track all of the type out a little bit, or I could maybe increase the spacing between my division lines, which I think is what I'm going to do on this one. So we'll shift this guy over. Let's group these two. And luckily with our smart guides, you get a little bit of a prompt to know when you've got even spacing, which really helps. I'm glad so many apps have that, by the way, that, oh, the, the isn't hinting. It? It's yeah. so helpful. Did you ever, because I know you've been using InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator for a while. Did you ever used to like draw a box and use I, a box to like yeah. measure? <laughs> I still use that in um, uh, web design. <laughs> you know what? You know why that is helpful is because visually you want to make sure that it like looks good. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? There's a visually centered versus like numerically centered. So those guides are for like a numeric centered. So, anyway. Yeah. And sometimes they're not right. So you can, you know, yeah, even if it was yeah. perfect, you optically change it, especially yeah. when you're dealing with letters. So yeah, optical spacing is a really big part of this and developing your eye over time. Um, that really helps. Okay. So I've got it pretty simple. I mean, in terms of this, in the first issue, if you go back and, and decide you want to watch it, this is designed because it needed to be neutral and not really like take over from everything else that's going on. It's, it's supporting content. So we're going to bank it down there and just leave it and move on. Okay. Now, when I go back to my brief document and remember what else I'm keeping. So we've got the cover footer on there. Now we need the page furniture. So the page furniture, and if I'm using a term that is not a real term, uh, that's very likely. Um, you feel free to let me know what other terms you guys have for it. Other other terms for what again? <laughs> Sorry, I for, missed it. For page furniture. Page furniture. Oh, all the <laughs> stuff around the content. <laughs> yeah. I like page furniture. I like page furniture. What's funny I'm... is you you told me page furniture. I knew exactly what you were talking about. So Good. I think it's a great great maybe, definition. Maybe it's legit. I'm not sure. <laughs> Can you, when you get a second, just like increase uh, InDesign to cover the whole screen? Oh, of that course. strip at the yeah. bottom because I made you, I made you hide the dock and disrupt your whole process. Oh, sorry. But yeah. There we go. Is that good? Yeah, that's great. Okay, Thank cool. Um, okay, so we have the page furniture, and for people who are new to InDesign, just knowing that there are master pages and regular pages. Master pages, anything you apply on the master will appear on your regular pages, depending on whether you have like put a master on the A page. And I'm going, because that's maybe a little bit complicated to understand with just me speaking, I think showing you is probably gonna be the best option. So I'm gonna dive into a master and paste in place the page furniture that we had from the last document. So we've got the author credit, we've got the issue number, and we've also got page numbers. So just off the get go, let's update that. And then I'm gonna show you how both of those work. Looks like um, Arifa knows it as page furniture as well. So Yay, that's good to know. 
Okay, so we've updated that. Up the top, these are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. They're just type. Down here, maybe it might be new to some people, just page numbers. So just knowing that I'm on the A master here. And so it's telling me my page number is A because it's the A master. But if I, so I'll zoom in really big so you guys can see. Okay, so I'm on A, but if I go to say page four, it should say page four, which it does. And if I go to page 12, it'll say page 12. So that's just how page numbers and sort of work. Yeah, so you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to define that as a page Not number. at all. Well, that's no, cool. so because it came over, I didn't have to, but I will okay. tell you how to insert one just for people who are very new to it. Yeah. So I've drawn a text box, actually, let me just go out of W mode so you guys can see, you know, the bleed, the guides, you can really understand the structure of InDesign. So drawing a text box and I'm going to go type insert special, uh, insert special character marker current page number and it's option shift command N if you can get that into your head. <laughs> um, so we'll put that there. And just to, I guess, make a point on it, let's uh, make this huge and something kind of ridiculous. Yeah, whatever this is. Okay, so say for some reason you wanted really, really big numbers to make uh, page numbers because that's part of your design. Now I've only really applied this to the master page. I made master page A. If I go to page eight, it says eight. I go to page 14, it says 14. So it's all cool. automatic for us. Now, is that and is that always like in sort of like the background? Yeah, uh, like, in terms I, of layers. Yeah. Like yeah. We'll, we'll, okay, so like the, the content will, uh, you know, like override or be on top of. Is there a way that you could put that 14 on top of the content? Absolutely, that's my next learning point actually. Ah. So let's, let's It's like we rehearsed back. this. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll show you how, uh, just to really, really emphasize that and what problem that is. So if we come here, because there are, there are two issues that are gonna happen with my page manager. So if we go to page two, and I know from my thumbnail, this is the page that is going to have a T-Rex. So let's find him. And I'm gonna pop him just in place on his page. And I also need to bring in some colors because I'm going to have color backgrounds. So let's get rid of these swatches and import my glam rock swatches. Awesome. And I'm going to draw a box. So you just exported those from InDesign mm -hmm. and brought them right in, ASE Oh, files. from from Illustrator, yeah, yeah. I, Illustrator. These are just JPEGs at the moment. Um, you can definitely put in the AIs, uh, anything you'd like. I'm keeping things light and small, so I kind of went with JPEGs. Yeah. Yeah, so just to illustrate the point that Paul was talking about, okay, so I have my, my two sides of my page. I can hit command shift and back bracket all I want to send to back and I'm never going to see those page numbers. They're all hiding under here. So what you need to do to fix that is go to your A master, go into layers and you can see we've got one layer. So I'm going to add another layer, select everything, move it on up and lock it. Okay. So when I go back to my page now, they're on top because I've got my yellow and my black on the bottom. Magic. So that, yeah. And so you're working on the, so that yellow is on layer one then? Absolutely, right? yes. Okay. Working on layer one and layer two, maybe we'll call this page furniture. But we do have another problem that's happened. Over here on old Mark Bolin, it's a black, uh, black page furniture on a black background which is a yeah. little bit of an issue for us as well. So this is when creating a separate master page is really handy. So I'm gonna duplicate my master spread A and you can see it now says B master. 
I'm going to select it all, although I will have locked the layer, so let's make sure I unlock it first. Select everything, swatches, go paper. Uh, obviously you can't see it because it's paper, but believe it's there. <laughs> And it hasn't applied it. And that's just simply because I've still got the A on the A master, so on uh -huh. that page. So I need to go B and drag that down and pop it on. And then all of a sudden my issue's there. Cool. Cool. So just and then like- you could, you could even rename that. So it could be like B master white or something. Absolutely, so yeah. You know when um, you go there, which one is which? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So the, it's just, you can have infinite master pages. I think I'm going to keep things pretty simple and just have two. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're really, really handy. Okay, so I've, I'm doing that basic setup. And when I look at my checklist of things I'm keeping, I just want to make sure I'm on track. So let's bring up my document. Have I got footer? I have got the page furniture. The names have been updated. I've set them up on master pages. The next thing to do is grids. All right. So I can go back into my older document and just check what my margins and columns were. So it's a clean 20 on every side and six columns with a seven gutter. You did a great job with those designs though for the uh, Woodstock. Book Thank you. Well. Oh, yeah, it was like that design is just like, this is brilliant. Thank you. I love yeah. what you did with the sky and all that. Like this is just really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just I. I'm inspired so and jealous <laughs> at the same time. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, this is it, really cool. It was really fun to dive into psychedelic or modern psychedelic and just see what we can do and how to how to make that not just a poster like the front uh -huh. cover and make it editorial. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. All right, so let's get into our glam rock. Uh, so we wanna set the, the margins. I could set them like right here on this page that's, that's highlighted, but actually I wanna set them to my masters. So I'm gonna select all four masters, layout, margins and columns. I believe it was all 20 with six columns and seven gutter. Okay, so things are sort of locked up and you can see on every single page now, I have my mar um, my margins and my columns all set up for me. Okay, and then let's see if I'm missing my next bit. So after the grid, we look at body copy styling. So we are gonna keep the body copy styling, but I'm gonna go through the exercise of style tiling and also setting up paragraph styles, just in case you weren't here last time. It's really great to learn and, and to see that happen. Uh, but yeah, I, in the end, I'll probably keep the styles from last time. Okay. So style tiling is something that often happens in UI uh, for digital design, where you set up the basic uh, ideas of what your button's going to look like, what your body copy is going to look like, what a heading one, two, three is going to look like. But you can do that just with a print document as well. So the first step of that is to go to your copy and to get a pretty standard segment. So the first page is a little special. So I'll go to the second spread and just grab all of that content. Okay. And on any page, you don't need to set it on the right page. This is just for you to, to learn styling and to play around a little bit. With your T-tool, paste it in. You could set up a multi-columned one box. You can link into, actually, I might keep it just two columns. You know, run that, that content out. Get your body copy to a body copy size. So normally it's about 10, you can go down to nine. I'm gonna split the difference and I'm gonna go 9.5. And let's zoom on in so you guys can see what I'm dealing with here with greater detail. So there's a quote and that's because I, when I was reading it, I wrote some notes and said this would be a great pullout. So I'm going to remove it from my box and we'll style that slightly differently. 
You have a, is this like an eight, like an, how many, what column grid is this? It's a six your... column. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you probably I... said that earlier, but no. I missed it. No, you, that's okay. You typically do like six column grid? Well, I'm sure it depends, but. I don't have a necessarily a typical, I think at the moment I've been favoring even number grids. I, I really only have two differences and it's whether I go odd numbered or even numbered depending on what I'm doing because there's so much symmetry with this design, I went even. Yeah. But if it was something else, I probably would have gone odd because it forces me to to play with the balance a little bit more if it's got okay. an odd well, number. Yeah, and I do like I do like this, you know, uh, even numbered grid because you could do you could have three columns like you're doing here, which absolutely, yeah. Uh, so, you know how it goes, it's like typically art schools, like oh, you know, have an odd number of things because it makes it more interesting or whatever. I'm yeah, sure that's <laughs> like if you're painting or illustrating something. Yeah, anyways, yeah. Anyway. That's definitely it's it, and there are there's a right time the, for the odd grid and I've used it plenty of times. I love it, but you know, for now an even grid you can end up with three columns anyway, just like you said, and you can use it in so many different ways. And it looks like uh your Yuritima is asking how you made the grid to begin with. You set that up at the very beginning of the document, but didn't you? Uh no, I didn't. So Sorry. that was no, that's okay. I should be watching the stream. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I'm so ashamed. Oh, there we go. Right below. Okay, there we go. Margins yeah. and columns. Yeah, yeah. So we, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'll, I'll edit it so that you can see. So what I did was I set up my master pages first, and then I selected all my master pages because I knew it was going to affect everything else. And I went layout, margins and columns up the top. And it brings up this dialog box. And as long as you've got preview set, you can you can see a whole bunch of stuff happening. So you can go ham and have so many things on. Gutters, I mean, just if you want to know what gutters are, they so they are the space between the columns. So you can see if I start making it smaller, the space little less space. I have actually pretty large gutters going on for a reason. In terms of um, I've got some. Uh, vertical lines that support my body copy and they needed to breathe. I think I'm normally just by default and just by practice and because I've done this a while, I set my gutters around about four or five just off, you know, straight away off the bat. But we're gonna have some extra large ones, extra large ones today. Oh, so six columns, seven. Nice. It'll all make sense as we go. <laughs> okay, back down here. So um, I'm, you know, I'm going to copy the whole accidents grotesque thing from last time, but we're going to have a look at if we were style tiling this for the first time. So I'm going to go to good old fonts in use from the 1970s because this is what it's based in. What's really great is that immediately I'm, uh, I can confirm that the idea to keep Accidents grotesque is a good thing because that was prevalent in that era. There's a whole bunch of other things. You can see Futura, Times New Roman. Maybe we could try that. Uh, Universe. Uh, what else do we have in here? I thank God. We've got Bauhaus. Yeah. So a, yeah, so there's like some fun stuff that I can play with to, to just see what styles, even Gil Sands. Okay, so let's Sweet. pick one. I'm gonna go with good old Gil Sands because that's the last one I just heard. We'll set it at regular. Can you see that there's no paragraph spacing going on? It's all just one heavy block of type. So we need to change that. So hitting command option T to bring up our paragraph. We can add a space after so that it can breathe. Okay, uh, the other thing I really don't love my opinion, but it's okay if you like them is hyphenation. So I'm going to turn that off so that it's not doing that. And just with my eyedropper, I'm going to, you know, style the, the quote the same. When you're type pairing, you can choose to do it in so many ways. And actually this is maybe a good way to show you another fun resource. Um, what is it? Font dating game. 
do you, uh, if if you're new to fonts and choosing fonts type connection is a game you can play uh so you can go a ty typographic dating game so life's too short to live alone choose a main character so if you're dealing with a sans serif which we are at the moment oh sorry serif there are there are schools of thought on how to match them so you can rely on the family which i think we should try but also you know maybe that's too careful and it can be uh not as interesting seek similar uh, if you can get it right, it's okay, but often this clashes because they're too close. Embrace the other, so go very, very contrast, or explore the past. So look at historic influences. We are definitely going to be exploring the past with our choices, but let's like look at a couple of these in my font pairing and my font choices. So that's typeconnection.com if you want to go and play the dating game. That is so cool. Another yeah. awesome resource. Because it's yeah. like, it really like teaches you, I'm just, I'm going through it, really kind of teaches you the differences and similarities between fonts and yeah. how they work together and how contrasts are complementary and stuff like that. So it's really cool. So yeah. thank you so much. Type of connection. Type connection, guys. Get in it. Okay, so I'm going to, you know, do the first school of thought, which we saw on that type connection, which was stick in the family. So if I pick in, if I'm picking uh, Guild Sands, I'm going to stay there. So let's go, um, you know, like ultra bold. Whoa, it's amazing. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> uh, and then maybe I'll style this with like an all caps and I'll track it out a little. Uh, do I want three columns sort of thing like that? Cause it creates a better body. Yeah. Something like that. And maybe I, some sort of semi bolt. So if I have a, oh no, maybe this needs to go lighter. Or do you do, uh, I like doing drop caps. Drop caps? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So drop caps are not my favorite thing, but fair enough. <laughs> the storybook <laughs> idea is, well, yeah. actually, yeah. And, but, but not kind of for this design because your design yeah, yeah. has like lots of room to breathe. Yeah. I think sometimes drops cap, drop caps breaks up paragraphs. If you have a lot of information, I don't know. Yeah, it can. I mean, I, I, it's, it's the whole bunch of taste things as well. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, indents when it comes to paragraphs and things like that, like starting okay. indents. But I yeah. also know it's a space saver for so many um, newspapers. Huh. So, yeah, it's whatever yeah. floats your boat, guys. Yeah. So, okay, let's say that this is one option. And what you can do if you're about to do a really, really big book. So I have typeset many books that are over 100 page, that sort of thing. You don't want to typeset at all and then, you know, have people ask for like different styles necessarily and it could really blow out things. So you can show a sample spread to your client and then they can, you know, have their opinions and then you go ahead, implement them into your document and keep going. So you know you're on the right track. So let's style it up again. So, I mean, I'm going, because I know I'm going to go towards accidents grotesque, let's just do it. Accidents. Oh, yeah. Accidents. <laughs> it's spelled really fun. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part about most fonts is just trying to pronounce their name half uh -huh. the time. <laughs> so we'll go accidents but... grotesque. And then... I like it. I like the, just back to the, you know, typographic dating game is interesting because you're pairing two fonts. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole thought. I think the dating is a good analogy because, again, you're, you know, probably dating one other person. So pairs of fonts go together. You yeah. can maybe push it to three. You don't want to go to like five, for instance. Yeah. And then and if you're one putting... is boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like this. But interestingly, so this is me exploring within one font family. This is all one font. But yeah. because it's got a super bold, it worked out OK. But if I didn't go... Uh, ultra bold, sorry, maybe it wouldn't mm -hmm. have had any punch. Yeah. I mean, I don't intend on using that one anyway, but you know, it's sometimes I didn't, it works, I didn't sometimes realize it that that was the same font. The quote font's the same as the body copy. Yeah. It's the same font. Let's have a look, guys. So we've got Guilt and Semi Bold as a pullout. We've got Light and we have Ultra Bold. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Some, cool. I mean, Guilt Sands is one of the most well formed fonts there is. Okay, so this time we're going to, let's see, maybe go contrasting. So we've done 
uh, similar family. Let's do contrasting. So what could we do? Oh, um, the Bauhaus one was really fun. So like, let's bring this up. It's really beautiful, but you can sort of see that maybe it's a little hard to read with that much type. You know, maybe not quite, quite going to be what we need. Uh, I do like this in little caps, but we can try a, like a little bit more uh, styling on this one. So we'll leave it accidents grotesque because that's where we're going. But doing things where, you know, uh, command option J, which uh, paragraph rules, which I lovingly refer to as a jar rule because of command option J to get to paragraph rule. Uh, we can go rule above. And it, you can see what it's doing there. Maybe I can scoot on in so you can see a little better, huh? So, oops. preview. Oh, rule on. And it's ruling all the way across. But we're going to rule just over uh, uh, on our text and we need to offset it. So, maybe somewhere like that. And I can tell that I need some more space. So, something like this. So we've got a bit of styling going on. Maybe that needs to be bolder just to like stand its ground with this like really interesting font going on. And now that I've added lines, I could look into adding lines maybe inside my paragraph. So going command option J for jar rule, go rule above, offset it, maybe rule below and we'll offset that up there. Oh, no way. Uh, and let's get that paragraph spacing rolling. Cool, so we've got like two very quick styles going on. Um, these lines might be really fun for me. They're, they're a little bit claustrophobic, but you know, just knowing that you can do a whole bunch of little things like that, you know, perhaps instead of doing lines like that, you could look at you know, vertical lines and how they could work. You know, putting in a vertical line like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so lots of lots of interesting things that you can do. What I and can do is you're just trying like two different page layouts, right? Yeah. Like just kind of I'm ex not even, experimenting. Not even a page layout. Like okay. it's not it's not necessarily how it's gonna sit. It's oh, that's just true. It's just okay. the, the styling of the type, because if I can style the type now to a place that I'm happy with, I can create my paragraph and character styles, and then we're going to have a really clean flow. Very cool. Cool. I like it. I like that. That's Gil Sands on the, on the left, right? Yes. Yeah. Gil Sands on the left. So I'll move this I like, guy over. I like it. I like it. I like that font for the quotes. Pretty cool. Oh, it's gorgeous. All right, so let's bring this guy over. We're gonna set it to, oh, I forgot. Okay, maybe I'll keep this guy. Now we're definitely playing this game knowing where we're ending up just because we've got precedent, but I think it's still fun to play. So I'll get rid of those jar rules. Make sure everything is nice. And Mm -hmm. And I wanted to actually try cable. So this is like the fourth option where we look at historic references. So the cable font and also just being a little dramatic because I think we've been quite shy almost. So really, really bumping it up and seeing what it looks like quite proudly. And I think maybe a little bit less spacing between it. As fonts looks, get blown up, yeah. yeah. Looks similar to the font you used on the cover. It is, it is actually. Is it the same one? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I'm just making sure. No, and I think I that's I what I want to. It. Yeah, it's because, um, well, obviously we found it on fonts in use, and I do want to have a little tie in going on. So mm -hmm. from the outside to the inside, thinking about bringing it into the quote. Uh, the other thing I want to bring a tie in for is that when we go back to the last document, and on the front cover, we are using accident grotesque uh, condensed. So I might just quickly paste it on the page that it will be relevant. 
and bring it back down. Uh, George George Camorra is asking if you have art in the back of your mind as you're setting the pages up. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Uh, I have, well, because I've done the uh, thumbnailing, I do have a generalized plan of what's going to happen. And um, if, if you weren't here yesterday, let me show you them. So I have an idea of where it's going for, for every single spread. So knowing uh, where Mark Boland's going to sit and generally where the credits are going to go. This is a plan and sometimes the plan doesn't work first go. So <laughs> if you, you know, go off those thumbnails, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> Okay, so we'll get rid of that underline. Maybe just look at putting in a super. Cool. Like this is probably where we're going to end up just because I want to have, I mean, if we go back to the keywords of the brief, it's about being, you know, the spectacular, the stage presence, the persona the spotlight. So I do want my my big pull out quotes and the fact that it says, I promise I won't be boring to come out and like really smack you in the face. So improving that scale and bringing that uh, connection from inside to out. But saying this, this is really beautiful. And what I could do is, you know, screenshot it and save it for later because you never know when a project will come up where that's, that is the right choice for us. So yeah, that's style tiling and and just trying to figure out what styles of uh, type you're going to have in your editorial. Yeah, very, very cool. And once you have this kind of figured out, mm -hmm. I, I know you haven't gotten to that step yet, but like you would turn this into char character and, or paragraph styles at least, right? Absolutely. Is that kind of where you'd go with after this? Yes, that's where we're headed. Cool. So I'm going to delete these options and I'm going to keep this guy here. So paragraph styles. Let's pop this here. Um, when I teach at Chillington, we have a pretty, I, I hope anyway, pretty easy way to learn about paragraph styles. So I'll bring out my paragraph uh, palette. Uh, basically it is style, capture, apply, right? The three steps of paragraph styles. So we have done our styling. Have, so let's just make sure I've got some clean numbers on there because sometimes non-clean numbers drive me nuts. Cool. All right. So what I will do, let's get rid of this line. So I've got my body copy. So I'm going to select it. And what I can do from there is go new paragraph style. I'm going to call it body copy. Well, it's not based off anything. And, oh, I didn't spell copyright. Uh, you can see what it is actually capturing because we've styled, this is the capture phase. So it's capturing the font, the size of the font, the leading. Uh, it's capturing the color as well. So if I change the color later, we're going to get a little signal saying something's different. The other thing to remember to do is apply style to selection, okay? So that it is applying that style back. But I'll show you how that works in a second. Okay, so I've got body copy. What else can we do? New paragraph style for... First paragraph or... Yeah, well, uh, body copy highlight, something highlight. like that. Yeah. So where, you know, wherever we decide to highlight it, and it's going to be the only real difference on that is that it's a uh, super. We'll apply selection. Go OK. We're going to grab this one. New paragraph style. We're going to call it quote. And lastly, new paragraph style and we'll call it credit. Okay, so we've captured now, and then there's the apply stage. So let's go up to, well, let's get some more content actually.
we grab the next page and I'll just plunk it here. Okay, so let's put it in some columns. Never quite sure how many columns I'm going to need. That will start with there. Let's select all and say, hey, B, body copy. And that happened instantly for me. I'll get rid of these here. When I select this and say, can you look like a quote? It happened for me. And then selecting the credit and say, be like the credit. And then that's happened for me as well. So it's just a way of automating this process now. And I'll know that whatever I do, it will always look similar. So I can say, I want that to be a body copy highlight. And very quickly, I can style the pages and get them done. So that's just an efficient way of working. Oh. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> All right, so we'll leave them where they are. Maybe I'll move this down to the page it belongs, but we'll come back. And let's start at the start. Uh, so I had bought over the author credits and the originally published credits. So I want to um, fill those in. And just a quick reminder as you do that, uh, we have our yep. challenge. Challenge tab is up. So just right behind chat. Hopefully you're on behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. And uh, it's all about dealing with blend modes in Illustrator of all things. So that's what we'll review in about 43 minutes. So check out the challenge tab. Okay. Do you have a flav favorite blend mode? Uh, yeah, overlay. Overlay. Uh, yeah. I, I think multiply is just the one that use, I get used so much. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I like overlay. I like soft light. Yeah. Like everything within that segment. Um, cause probably multiply is in there as well. Yeah. Multiply is a blend mode. Cause there's like, there's the, the blend modes that lighten, the blend modes that darken, and then the blend modes that uh, react differently based on the color behind it and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, multiply. Oh, yeah, multiply's right up there. Okay. Oh, yes. okay. I see it. Cool. The... I had, to, had to check it out. <laughs> cool. All right. So I'm just bringing in my first page type. I have got a big uh, important thing called the intro paragraph, which is the intro to the entire article. And just like looking back to see what that is, it is something that I am choosing to treat very, very specially. So it's a one-off, you could make a style for it. You maybe don't need to because I'm not going to repeat it anywhere. So we're going to blow up our first paragraph to mimic this crossover two columns, just like we did before. The other thing that we should bring over is our column lines because that will help keep things neat. So let's get out our uh, intro paragraph. Let's expand it over a couple of columns. And it's going to be the credit, uh, uh, sorry, the quote font. So it will be cable but it won't quite be as big as we were using cable before. Maybe somewhere like that. I'm also going to choose to not keep that white. So on the first one, it's always treated a little bit differently. So let's go body copy. Run that second column. Might rise it until I have all of it sorted. Cool. What is your thoughts on like line spacing? Do you do you play with line spacing just to make sure you have enough sort of copy to fill an area? Do you ever do that? What do you mean by line spacing? 
or excuse, the yeah the letting basically oh letting, <laughs> letting. yeah 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 um uh, rule of thumb letting is uh always two points above this is pretty good it's 9.5 to 11.4 so it's just um 1.1 off and that's the automatic definitely yeah if it's not looking right put in some more letting okay gotcha yeah <laughs> cool i mean I, I do that as well but you could obviously overdo it so that's why it's nice to hear oh yeah that general rule of thumb yeah i mean actually do people want to see just like in general what letting does so bring up our character palette letting is this good guy here in general two above uh, which is what we've got, and I think it's it's working. Uh -huh. it's, it's working fine. So if we expand it, it's going to look like this, and that might be a bit hard for people to read. The more yeah. disjointed it gets, the harder it is to keep flow of reading. Inversely, if we select it, if you go too far, it's really intimidating to read and and really too much. So too mm -hmm. small and too big. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That is a good way to sometimes highlight maybe, a, you know, a paragraph if you wanted to, because it did make that stand out. But yeah. I like your point about it's just, it's going to make it hard to read if you do it with a lot of copy. And if there's too much letting, it's it's going to be not that fun to read. Yeah, I mean, like the rules of typesetting are by some really, really strict, but I always think there's just always an exception, always, always an exception where extended letting or really short letting is really going to be the thing that you want to do. Let's clean up these boxes. Ker and make Kerwin sure wants to say thanks for letting us be a part of your design experience. Oh my gosh. We got yes. jokes. Oh, we've got Help jokes. Us all. <laughs> Can you, Kern, you believe it. Oh, yeah. type amazing. jokes. Help us all. Oh, while you're doing that, I want to brag about you. Is that okay? Uh, sure. And I'm, I'm gonna switch my to over to my screen because I don't, I don't think I didn't realize this the other day. Ooh, let me just fix my resolution. Oh yeah, let me brag about you. Because I was it? just on your website and then I scrolled down and then I'm like, oh, let's see, like, oh, it looks like she won like an award. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wait, let's, wait, 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 she's a little more. Wait, she won, she won a, few, a few more, just a few more. Just holy cow, stop it already. <laughs> Published titles, games, greeting cards, calendars. I'm feeling so lazy. What have I been doing with my life? <laughs> Exhibitions, books and annuals and notable listings. So anyways, you're just awesome. That's all I'd like to say. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna switch back to you. I really appreciate you taking time out of here. Hey, you're busy. Busy life of winning awards too. <laughs> Show us how to win <laughs> awards too, maybe. Yeah. So. Oh, I mean, I'm happy to. Um, awards are a good thing, but they're also not a necessary thing. So for all the new designers, don't worry about that. But like, yeah, yeah it, it is yeah. nice to try for the industry recognition every now and then. Yeah. And well, I like how you, it seems like, you know, you've written books, you've done a lot of extracurricular, extra things beyond, yeah. you know, your day job that, you know, you've worked hard and I think it's like paid off. So it's just really cool seeing you, you know, write a book. Nobody's telling you to write a book and yet you'll put a book together. Listen. what it seems like to me. But the book is definitely a kid's book. Oh, <laughs> so. doesn't matter. That's at my reading level. I'm into it. Oh, good. So I'm all about it. Yes, uh, Ruby, Ruby write, the Red I always Panda. say write, write a book that you will read. Yeah, I would write yeah. a children's book. I, oh, I, yeah. Um, there was one of those time capsule things and everybody who's just graduated, especially in this time in, um, you know, uh, the time of lockdown, one of the exercises I did when I finished uh, university, uh, one of my lecturers got us to do was a plan for what, where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? And it's a really, really great exercise. And I scared myself writing down something. So, you know, my first year was I want to be a junior designer and actually using my education and working in the industry I want. And that's like a big goal and probably was the hardest one to achieve. Uh, but of course, like it grew and grew. And uh, my lecturer was like, dream bigger when she saw my initial plans for, you know, year five and year 10. And it was a real push to, to, 
to want more and strive for some more. Yeah. You know, and that's when I was like, you know, as opposed to I'd love to be illustrating. She was like, well, illustrate your own books, like have your own thing. Yeah. And I, I wrote it down thinking, no, that's never going to happen. And then it does. Mm-hmm. And when you look back, it's just so amazing that right now I could write a 10 year plan and believe things yeah. that I, you know, I could dream really big and right now yeah. think they're impossible, but they could be. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> I thoroughly agree. Like you, you want to be able to impress yourself. And you're yeah. not going to impress yourself with g- glo- goals that are easily attainable, right? Yeah. It's like just think about like how do you want to impress yourself in ten years? Like what would be impressive to you? And I don't know. I think that's gonna that's awesome. So good to hear. Yeah. Guys, write down your goals. Oh, yeah. Send them to somebody who will like yeah. keep them safe for you. Yep. Okay, um, just to catch up, because I, I can definitely tell that I'm working on autopilot and just like putting things into place, spread one. <laughs> so uh, just, you know, I've highlighted a spread, uh, sorry, a paragraph that's important. I've added in my lines. I've got my intro paragraph, got my credits, all that sort of stuff. And it's looking um, fairly similar and contained. One thing I've actually forgotten is a credit. So because I've used some photographs to base those illustrations off, you do want to, you know, just recognize that. So I'm going to go uh, reference image and in recognizing it, it's not about taking away from it next necessarily. So I'll roughly put it in there, but I'm going to make it about a size seven. Make it white. Oh, I just lost the other one. Go. Sorry. <laughs> and just pop it in to the margins. Okay, so it's like quite little, but it's just letting people know that, you know, this pose is off something, based off something. All right, old Bowie. Looking good there. This was the one that I actually styled up already um, in the style tile, which is very, very handy. All I need to do is bring in my lines. So I don't need too many lines. There we go. Nice. I think you, so Mm -hmm. you obviously follow a lot of like graphic design, like fundamentals. Yeah. Yep. Which is really good. And you know them. I think typically people already do them before even going to art school, but art school kind of teaches you why you do what you do, maybe kind of instinctually. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyways. Yeah. I'm just like really into this because you do, you you sometimes need elements to ground a page or to ground (gasps) an illustration. You need hierarchy Uh, like you're doing, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, I can probably find a way to really, really show that actually. I, I, I almost think it would be actually I love I love doing white text. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on I mean, a color. And again, this is for a zine, it's an online magazine, yeah. so this works. Mm-hmm. But just having some fun with it. So okay. Having grounding in what you're doing. This we're gonna come and play with in a second. But I have a grid. I wonder is the grid showing up very well on yours? Not really. So let's make it pink for now and hopefully you guys can can you see the grid a little bit easier yeah yes. yeah cool all right so giving yourself boundaries and grids to work with makes things so much easier because if i uh select none right now and get rid of my oh it doesn't want to get rid of my margins let's go layout margin and let's get rid of columns let's get rid of margins and you're just dealing with this space it's going to feel kind of strange about where to place things it's going to feel random it becomes a bit hard and you don't know what you're doing so by just having the grid and and if you want three columns going to six and making it more complex you just are all of a sudden given more spaces so i'll go back to the blue So right now I could copy what I just did before, but I also could play with, you know, how that's working. I could extend this to be bigger. So 
but can you see there's like more options going on i can play with do i want it really small i mean obviously we don't because it's too big but interesting kind of mimics his pants <laughs> in a weird way yeah but you know the the columns really help you to lock things into place so i'm going to maybe pick somewhere here Yeah, and I think since you have those columns like set up, mm -hmm. you know, you it doesn't look like it's floating there. Absolutely. And there is yeah. that line underneath. Is there? A, wait, wait, actually, what's a? Okay, let's see. There's lines on the sides of the columns. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So just to create a little bit of structure, this is a really neat way to not have to worry about your rags as much. I will go back and do some uh, 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 kerning slash tracking to huh. make my rags a little bit better. But having these lines optically kind of form that for you. So you could also choose to do justification, but if you do a justified type, remember that you're going to get rivers and you have to go and fix them because yeah. otherwise it's a little lazy. And I think justified text for a lot of text, it's still kind of like hard to read. I think it can justified. be. Yeah, it can be. I don't for think sure. it's. Yeah, it's just like, okay, well, I ended at this line. I don't like, I don't know, just like if it's if it's long text as well and it's justified, I think it's harder to read. Yeah. But that yeah. might just be me. All right, that's why I stick to children's books. <laughs> One sentence per page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to pop girl in. girl says it looks Perfect. awesome. Oh, thank Voodoo you. Val says, don't forget about the challenge. Oh. Uh, where do you find pictures as reference? You just find it on the web, I'm sure, right? I, I absolutely am finding that. I mean, depending on what I'm doing, Flickr Commons and things are really great places if you want historical references that aren't famous ah. people. Get in on that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Flickr, is there a way to search Commons in on Flickr? Uh, yeah, hang on, let me, I'll bring, her, I'll bring it up. No, you're all good. It's like a comments. So um, say you're doing a collage and, or, you know, a digital collage and you want to uh, do it around flowers. This is a place where all of these images are free to use. OK, so in, in however way you want to do it. And they're they're so old and so beautiful. So many of them. So, yes, these look like photographs. But as you go down, do you see there's like all these incredible illustrations, botanical illustrations Gorgeous. that you could use. There's, yeah, they're incredible. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pictures. And so if you're looking for assets for things like that, go and have a look. I mean, even just having access to beautiful illustrations like this. And I'm noticing you could actually sort by color. Oh, where's uh, that? Oh, up here. Field. Yeah, so I want red flowers, please. How beautiful. You got it. Yeah. Red flowers. That's great. <laughs> yeah, um, so this is a beautiful place. It also has a lot of historical uh, imagery in terms of people. So if, if you're, you know, really talking about a time frame, go in there. Oh my gosh, these are amazing. Yeah, flick a column. Those are cool. <laughs> Love it. Thank you for the reference. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for modern things, Unsplash seems to be my go-to, but you know, it's everyone's go-to. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put my reference. Double check it. And I think even with this red, maybe I need to make my page furniture white. So I'm going to apply my B master to them. Maybe it's a layer thing. Interesting. Some layer two. Oh, I didn't lock my layer. Yeah, that is so why. you have to lock it? To, <laughs> you have to lock it for it to Yeah, show up? yeah. I just need to move this down to layer one. Let's lock my page furniture so oh, okay. that I don't accidentally uh, yeah. design on it. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. 
Actually, let's make sure I've got... You're the only one that I know that works this way with everything hidden in tabs off to the side and only one panel open. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. well... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know enough people. In my circles. What do you do? Huh? Oh, what? I have everything open all the time. Like, I have... I usually have two columns open. So oh. I would have my layers open hey. and then I have my, yes. my pages and my layers panels open. Oh. And the next one would be like... <laughs> properties yeah typically but this is like actually much cleaner so you can I... actually focus on the design than all these crazy panels around <laughs> yeah I, it gets too overwhelming when things are encroaching i think i'm i'm a big fan of like moving out one palette if i'm just specifically yeah. you know using it Tweaking. and then tucking it back and you're just working on do you typically work on a laptop a desktop like what's your what's your setup Right now I'm on an iMac, but that's because I've been teaching from home. So I've got a, you know, a work computer come in, um, but I have a little laptop that I work okay. at as well. Both. But I must say like having a big, an iMac screen is the best. It yes. just improved your life so much. I will have to. Having that screen real estate. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, it's possibly it's because good for your I. your posture and everything. Yeah, it's right? possibly because I've had a laptop that I'm so good at like making sure screen real estate, everything gets tucked ah, back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so where are we up to now? Okay, so we've done Bowie, cool. Um, who is on this one? Slade. Okay, so you guys didn't get to see this illustration. Oh, we did let's, not. Let's bring in Slade. I don't even know who Slade is. Oh my God, I not apologize. not me either, really. Uh, but I would be happy to show you photos of them because they're kind of amazing. How did, so you're Australian. What's your background? Like, where did, did you grow up in Australia? Like, where did you, tell, tell us your, because Slade I haven't heard of. So I'm like, where are they from? English rock band, UK. I guess. UK, yes. UK. Uh, British. So, I mean, I think they're a bit of a, a riot, the larrikins kind of thing. Um, so this this necessarily isn't necessarily my music genre. I mean, Bowie and Elton, absolutely. <laughs> uh -huh. But these guys are... Oh, they're, they're they quite a lot. They, did they do a cover of Come On, Feel the Noise? I, I don't know. I'm just reading. I'm reading, the inter, I'm reading the web. Yeah, yeah. Get the Wikipedia facts okay. going. Um, well, <sighs> yeah, my background is born in New Zealand and raised in Australia. And I moved to America um, three years ago, a little bit over three and a half years ago, something like that. Wow. Yes. And is Australia largely influenced, like British, a lot of British influence? Cause yeah. Because some of these bands that you've mentioned are, are British bands. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I mean, just because glam rock originated in the UK, okay. when it, when it, so Joan Jett was the other side of that, um, uh -huh. that brought, brought it more to America. And then mm. I think the 80s, oh, Alice Cooper as well. That was your yeah. leader. Yeah. Um, but the 80s, you guys went ham on on the glam rock uh <laughs> i would like yeah it gets a little bit different because i don't even know if it's i don't know if it's glam rock or pop rock but it like you know when you when you talk about like i don't know i'm it, thinking of there's like rat there's like bon jovi there's all yeah. that like, i don't obviously within the rock sphere there's a lot of bands that kind of yeah, it's even yeah. like um you know even alice cooper kind of even kind of yeah. transitioned as well he's still very much top hat guy but like Yep. You know, he's uh, he's seen some era. Uh, yeah, um, Poison. <laughs> it's very glam rock. Yeah. So in, uh, I did put out on my Instagram before when I was planning this, uh, what music genre would you want? Mm -hmm. I was given, uh, I said hair metal. So this one was poss a possibility. Glam rock was another. And what was the other one? Psychobilly. Uh, which is a whole other world. Oh, like a, like a rockabilly with yeah. an edge? Yeah, yeah. So Into it. That's cool. was going to, you know, you know, like the cramps. So it was going to be, mm. oh, I've spelt it two separate words. <laughs> but that was also a possibility, like getting into this and seeing if I can turn this into editorial um, and do it in a, a simplified way. So maybe yeah. one day. <laughs> I love I love what you're doing. I think you picked glam rock is perfect. I can I I kind of think more of like hair metal is very much glam rock, very you know kind of hair synonymous. metal. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I had I'm all about that stuff. Yeah. Food boarding for it. I love yeah. it. We got Hamid New York Dolls. Steve likes New York Dolls. New York Dolls. Poison Lamp, they... Motley Crue. Motley Crue, yeah. <laughs> all the skulls when it comes to um, oh, Psycho Billy. Okay, so what color am I going to do? Well, I think. So I'm going to swap the images because I've got Bowie on the right there. So I'm going to move this one over to the left. Let's grab all of my contents. And as Boo Duval says, get your entries in for uh, the challenge reviews. We'll be doing that in about 20 minutes. Yay. All those blend modes. Blending, blending, blending. Okay. I mean, and one thing I didn't really talk about is this shaping thing. So when I'm creating maybe a mirror balance or off balance, I have tried to put in this shape, that spotlight shape to help it anchor towards the center of the page. It was just something that I felt like there was some balance issues and that was a way to solve it. So then carrying that on every little group ended up having a shape that helped it anchor to the center of the page. Cool. And you're talking about the, are you, are you talking about what, what shape are you talking about? Are you talking about the big old yeah. circle, good, the good, big good. old Just diamond. Just making sure we're referring to the yeah. same thing. Yeah, that's a good that's a good example of an anchor. So something's not floating around. Yeah, yeah. But that's a very smart like illustration thing to do. It's mm -hmm. like, very smart. And even this crop right here, what you did with uh, um, uh, the top Slade, is that yeah. where, is that who that is? Uh, that is T Rex. That's uh, Mark Bolin. <laughs> okay, T Rex. But just like that crop, that makes it so much more interesting to kind of cut off there and then you have that pattern in the background. Yeah, Anyways. there was a risk to this of like getting, I mean, even though it's lots of colors and different people, there was a risk of monotony. So changing mm -hmm. up the, the crop and the pose and, and where it's positioned is really important. So I've got yeah. mid bodies, I've got full bodies, I've got really close in ones that will happen a little bit longer uh, later down mm -hmm. the road. Yeah. All right, let's put in a background color. Maybe not black. Okay. So I'm going to change this over to white because I think it's big enough and it will hold its own space. And let's see how much, so we won't really worry about where we're locking that in while we just sort out the actual page itself. Okay, so it's sort of three. Done a lot of two columns, so maybe we can look at the three column. Yeah. We're taking it down, especially because this is a much bigger quote. <laughs> and where you place that is kind of up to you. Do you want it centrally taking up the space? Because there's that triangle, I could sort of optically align it a little bit to that. If we wanted to play with it, we could move it across, do all different things. I might keep it to the left. I favor strong left alignment where possible. We need to go get some lines. Maybe get them from up here. So you're actually a New Zealander, huh? Yeah, born in New Zealand and then I uh, lived there till I was seven. That's cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to go there. All my yeah. favorite like comedians as of late are from uh, New Zealand. Just like uh, Flight of the Concords and all those guys, yeah. you know, Taika Waititi and all them. He's amazing, my God. An absolute dreamboat. Who's that? Oh, <laughs> Taika. Yeah, oh really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, even just like what we do in the shadows, that show is. Oh yeah. Have you been watching the series? Uh, yes, I have. So, I, I mean, I was introduced through the, the movie that had Taika in it. Um, yeah. But I 
I love the series as well. Oh, good. That's why we're friends. <laughs> that's why I'm like totally into it. I watch one show every week that I look forward to, and that's 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 the show. That's the one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good pretty end. good stuff. Jojo Rabbit from Spawn. Yeah. So wow. good, right? Um, the Have Wilder Beast. Yeah, yeah, and. Oh hunting. yeah, uh, fl- uh, what is it? The wilder people? What is it? The fl- yeah, what is it? Hunt, hunt for the wilder beast or hunt for the wilder people? But it's uh, got Sam Neill, I think, in it. It's, yeah, it's a beautiful. Yeah, story he does. Telling. It is Sam Neill in it. I don't think most people would recognize him. <laughs> well, Australian. <laughs> uh, he's he's one of us. <laughs> I didn't know that Sam Neill is. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Okay, so Very I think cool. I might leave that one there. Let's make sure I don't forget my photo credit. Hunt for the wilder people, we're being corrected. Thank you guys. Thank you for that, <laughs> yes. Do you use baseline grids often? Uh, I have used them. I don't favor them as much. <laughs> yeah, um, so baseline grid makes sure that the lines are always lined up no matter what you're on. Uh, I often break the rules with my learning and how things work uh, and keep it a little bit organic. That's cool. But I've, ha- I've got clients or had clients that um, that was part of their brand guidelines was to always have a baseline grid happening. And yeah, like Red Cross was very much like that. Uh-huh. Okay, so we're getting some traction. Move on to the next page. So who will be got next? Oh, it's Elton. Hooray! It's the center spread. Which is very exciting. This is the one that's going to break things different. So let's flip over my master pages. This has a really interesting shape. So <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know because he was such a, a strange figure and quite long, um, putting in that shape behind him to anchor him down was really important, or else he wouldn't mm-hmm. have quite looked right. Yeah. Um, but also I'm breaking convention again by having that cropped. So, you know, it's figuring out uh, what keeps it consistent, but what keeps it interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's try to type. Body copy, we're just going to have to make it white. So if you're new to paragraph styles, just be aware. So I'll bring this over here and I'll zoom on in. Uh, I asked it to be body copy and uh, then made it white, which has now given me this plus. The plus is nothing to be too fearful about. It's just a signal that something has, something's changed, something's different. Um, and sometimes you want that difference and sometimes you're like, oh, whoops, something, I've made a mistake. So the difference now is that the color is different. I know some designers who don't like that plus ever and will then therefore make a new style that is white body copy, black body copy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, do that if that's that's your flow. This is only a 16 page booklet. I don't really need that many intricacies, so I won't do it. But I'm aware that's why I've got a little indicator saying something has changed. Yeah. Okay, so let's get his quote out. And interestingly on this one, there's not that much written about Elton. So 
we're going to have a very small amount of body copy. All right, less than 10 minutes before Ooh. we get to review your designs. Yay, looking forward to seeing them, guys. So Shanti, what, what do you do for fun? Or do you end up design, is design, I, like I, all I do is really design and then I like try to get exercise. <laughs> and then I d design some more. Is this, uh, is this pretty much like, yeah, tell me. It's a fairly similar story, I would say. Uh, I, I definitely illustrate and design, like I'm obsessed with it. I love design, I love it so much. It brings me much, a lot of joy. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and because of that, I think podcasts are the way that I do, the, you know, just listen to so many hours of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, I also have a dog. I know it's, you love your dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is always sleeping underneath me this maybe so he, he'll come out in a bit but yeah um <laughs> doug movies and i this is probably one of the main things i miss of just like regular life sort of stuff is i used to go to the movies like two times a week <laughs> oh yeah oh nice yeah same here i love movies i love tv i just mm -hmm. love all entertainment yeah. I just sit and watch TV. I don't know. It could be like the stupidest thing. I don't care. I will watch it. I'm just all about it. And if you could like watch something in design or listen to a podcast in design, that's pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, in terms of watching, it has to be something that I know because I will lose track of it. So a rewatch yeah. is a good, good thing for me. Yeah, that's true. That's why The Office is so, <laughs> so popular. <laughs> Yeah. Because I think, and for a while there, it was the number one watch show because everybody knew it and it was just on in the background. Old safety. Yeah. Yeah. Parks and Recs if, as well, if you're wanting something even perkier. I like Parks and Rec. What, like what does New everybody, Girl. oh yeah, I what do you New guys Girl. watch? <laughs> Alexandra Daly says like crime podcast, yes. Yeah. like crime, crime podcasts but i think that's the like. the new wave of fascination <laughs> um for for people right now though i would suggest like listening to things like the happiness lab that's really great um uh. yeah, it helps you sort of think about the science of happiness and you know things that you can do to help yourself uh, especially right now when, when things are really, really tough. Yeah, that's fascinating. <laughs> I'll have to check out that uh, it's a podcast. Yeah, the, it was by somebody, I think, who taught the, you know, happiness at Yale and they've created, yeah, it's, it's really great to get into the, the science of it all. Yeah, love it. <laughs> love it. Okay. Anything dealing with science and like human psychology, sociology is, I think, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just because of, I think I'm doing it on autopilot again, just looking at what we've done with this spread. So, you know, because we've got such a big, beautiful Elton taking up so much, we're really, really locking down our type into a small little area. Um, I can't get over how much I love his quote compared to his image, which is, I loathe celebrity, I can't stand it, next to him in full glamour. It's just perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like just just doing that and keeping it really, really simple. And it looks like he's kind of turning his back to, again to, away from it. So I think <laughs> yeah. that also works. Like I loathe celebrity, I can't stand it. He's turning his back away from it. But again, like the that with the dichotomy of him being dressed up like a big flamingo or something. Yeah, so it, it, yes, super it, fun. Lots of fun on that one. Cool. Or peacock, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see who's up next. We have a couple a couple entries for uh, the design challenge. So, 
uh, you'll probably still have some more time to design, Shanti, just so you know. That's great. I mean, we're um, going quite quickly, so I'll be able to do lots of finesse things and then show the presentation stuff. Awesome. All right, next up. Illustration. You know what I think would be a fun, a fun project for you as well? Yeah. Not that you don't, not that you have all this copious amounts of spare time, but like uh, doing playing cards. What if you did playing cards? Yeah, with what theme? What would my theme be? I don't know. That's the big <laughs> question. Could be anything you want. But yeah. just, I think you, you know, because you, you're able to knock out illustrations pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're doing like, you know, four suits, <laughs> do all the face cards, the numbers. It's a very, it's the, it's a good marriage of graphic design and illustration. So yeah. and that, that could be a present that you give uh, for Christmas or something. I don't know. That's, yeah, that's awesome. I, um, I think MailChimp <laughs> did some really great designed uh, playing cards once and they've got beautiful foil and stuff on them. Oh. It was, yeah, really, really beautiful. And I think it's a, that's such a good design challenge because it's already got such strong standards and you trying to figure out how to put your own spin on it. It's really, yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, exactly. I do have a memory card game, <laughs> okay. which is just lots of animals, you know, mem when you play memory and you flip yeah. them. Yes, yeah, that, that's something that exists out there somewhere. Okay, what do we want? I think I'm going to go with red because it's the background with the stripes on this one. Plus, I just love red and pink together. Looks like you also did a hide and seek puzzle. Is that kind of similar? Yeah, it's um, very much for little kids. I think it's only like 48 pieces, <laughs> very <laughs> large pieces. Uh, yeah, big cool. puzzle. Feeling so lazy right now. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Oh my gosh, being an evangelist. Sydney <laughs> uh, says, hey, Shanti. Hi. You know Sydney Liguori? You yeah, do I, now. I do. Oh, you do? Oh, awesome. I love her. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she's the one who reminded me how important graphic designers are the other day. So, yeah, I'm sure yeah. she's an incredible, incredible teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Good to have you here, Sydney. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I need my type. So we have Brian Ferry of Roxy, just to the side. This one, this illustration had a fairly interesting crop and I did struggle a little bit with him because he was at such an interesting angle that he kind of looked like I had rotated him. So I kind of, uh, by making a square, I tried to give him a horizon. So it looked really intentional. So just mm -hmm. anchoring him with that square. But yeah, so you, you get different design challenges with each illustration. That's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I like it. Open our type. <laughs> yeah, uh, Synthil, we've been give, dropping various website, uh, websites for design references. I think you've been doing a good job of, you know, giving us websites um, yeah, to help um... with design. So keep those coming, by the way. Just mm -hmm. think about it, because I think you've given us some good resources, especially for typography. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to. Yeah, I'll keep thinking of, of different ones. I mean, the hands is kind of, <laughs> when I'm looking for design um, specifically, I do go to, I default there a little bit. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'll use Behance and then like Pinterest as well. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, there's, there's an interesting, uh, change in those two as well because the uh, hands. Uh, so I promote on both, and the hands will bring me designers and studios and in-house work. And I think Pinterest 
gets me client direct work. So if you guys are thinking right now, if you've graduated and you're about to promote, promote yourself, think about that and what kind of clients you're looking for. They often find, yeah, I often find startups approach me because maybe a client who doesn't have a design background will find you there. Hmm. Yeah, and then it's always good advice just to be, I know um, one of the other evangelists told me years ago, but it's like his whole plan is just to be everywhere. Just to be everywhere. On all platforms. <laughs> be, yeah, just be everywhere, which is honestly a tall order, but just knowing that some people are on some platforms over others. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I haven't used, I mean, I use uh, Pinterest just for inspiration, but I should be using it as a platform to... To, to work in my favor. But again, I'm not even looking for work, so what am I even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, Design Inspiration as well was a good one. Their color sorting really used to be a good thing for me. Because uh, if I'm ever trying to figure out how to use two colors that I don't know how to get them to work together, mm -hmm. Design Inspiration was really great. Actually, maybe I'll just show it. <laughs> yeah, and then we will, and then we'll review some of the challenge submissions. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, go for it, please. Yeah, cool. Check it out. Design. Oh, oh, no, I just wrote desperation. Design. Desperation. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So they've got this uh, palette thing in their search bar. So the way that this works is so if you know that the client color is blue and then also you've got to somehow use yellow, it comes up and you can go search and then all different examples of how blue and yellow come together. So, you know, you could just use blue and yellow, but also then this is really inspiring because it's telling me I can use blue and yellow, but uh, orange and pink to help me out if I needed to build out my color palette. And similarly, like with this, so I want to use blue and yellow, but green really helps me and just figuring out neutrals and things like that. The design that inspiration. Just gorgeous. Yeah. Again, another site that I'm not familiar with. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm like it's... 0 for 3 or whatever we're at at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so handy depending on what complex palette you have. Um, and then it'll just bring up works representative of that. So this is also really great if you're new at figuring out proportions of color. So how much of each color to use to make it look balanced, you can look at how other people are using proportions because that's just important, just as important as the palette. Yeah. 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 Your color, your color intensity and all that stuff's like, yeah, really important. Into it. Mm -hmm. oh, very cool. Well, let's kind of yeah. dive into uh, the daily creative challenge. So I'll go share my screen if I can. One of these buttons, like this one. All right, shifting over right here, challenge. Uh, we're gonna use the blend modes. So you can get the starter file here. There's not much in the starter file, by the way. Uh, it's pretty much blank, right? Just so you know, it has a plate on it. And you're gonna go ahead and plate this experience with uh, various blend modes. To kind of show you what uh, Andrew did. So this is the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. He put something like this together, which is Hell's Kitchen-esque sauce on top of sauce apparently something like that is it waffles um, with, yeah i think it looks like waffles and maybe it was like butter and bacon i don't mm -hmm. really know <laughs> uh but yeah so that's kind of what's happening just okay. to give you some context uh by the way in there also is a link out to not that but uh good old discord mm -hmm. we'll take a look at a couple of these Right, right here. This uh, looks like we have Yusef. Oh, what have we got? Uh, um, bangers and mash, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. It's, that's fun. And again, just kind of learning about how all the colors interact based on the blend modes. You know, yeah. I think for you and I, Shanti, I don't know if you do this, but I just scroll through all of the blend modes and just I watch it change because maybe I'll be surprised. Yeah, hitting that you shift know. plus and just going. You'll it's... you'll 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 end up on hard light. Wasn't that hard light? Isn't that the one you like? Oh, I like multiply. Oh, multiply, I'm... multiply. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> multiply. And then I'll I end up on uh, on overlay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's great. A blended breakfast. 
Yeah, so there you go with the oh, red. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Totally, yeah, nice totally work. works. Got some bacon there. Cool. You guys are figuring out transparency. Here's uh, Anthony's as well. Just, again, Aww. getting familiar with how the set works. <laughs> You've got Anthony some... Anthony was with us. I don't know if he still is. Anthony? This oh. is, I recognize his logo. This is his, like, his, oh, his nice. logo. Oh, nice. Oh, well, uh, you know, branded pancakes, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. It, I like that there's like, I, I'm assuming it's butter melted happening yeah, on the top and maybe point. on the side. Yeah. yeah. Branded, branded <laughs> waffles. I would seriously be the type that would have a branded waffle machine or toast <laughs> that I could design, put it like design a, a, a design on it. So this stuff exists. <laughs> and I, I have a friend, oh, yeah, does, no, yeah, yeah, a friend who got you know a Star Wars one that imprints onto the the waffles and pancakes. Nice. So yes, they're definitely there. <laughs> this is interesting because that bacon pattern kind of looks realistic. So they did well getting that in there. I yeah. also like they they took it a step further, and it's not a singular piece. You've actually tried to make it a layout um, yeah. and an add by adding that type as well. So yeah, yeah you've, you've caused a bit of balance by cropping it off onto that bottom right and mm -hmm. having the type top left. So there's, there's some real thought going on there. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you're right. Good, good design sense in there. <laughs> for mm -hmm. sure. Whoa. So great job. For two birds. <laughs> we have ant. Tubs of fun. Okay, so this is actually really good too. Wow. Kind of ice cream is a good way to go with blend modes. Oh, wow. Like little so sundaes. Fun. That's, that looks beautiful, the shading, the colors, everything. Um, oddly realistic. That's, that's yeah. great. Exactly. Very cool. Wow, you killed it. Amazing. <laughs> Even, I don't know, these are actually just probably just gradients. But yeah. Yeah, good job. High five. Oh, yeah. Good job. <laughs> good job. Uh, let's scroll back up and make sure we didn't miss anything. Back to the pie chart. This person's working on an album co cover, and then we've seen some of the pie charts. So uh, I'll do my best to kind of keep an eye on this and uh, review some uh, before the end of the hour. Oh, Sandy gets one in just in time. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Had a tough time with a hot sauce for the eggs. Yeah. Right. Oh, I think yeah, it looks great. Yeah, the hot sauce did well. I think it's my favorite so far. It's good. I wonder, was there some joke about when you pour the maple syrup, you pour it in a, in your own initials, like you do when you're a kid, you draw a smiley face? Perhaps oh, that's why yeah, maybe. There's letters and everything. <laughs> that's, Lots of that's butter good. melting. A lot of times this butter melting starts to look like a sun, but it still <laughs> looks really good. This is definitely my favorite one. Yeah. And I would definitely have the butter cover most of the pancake. Yep. If I was to eat it. Great job, Sandy. High five. Good job. <laughs> All right, Shanti. I will yeah. turn it back over to you if you have. And thank you so much for that design inspiration source. Yeah, that just was, like, to way cool. Seeing how to deal with you know those colors. That's you're really giving cool. away all your tips. I don't know what you're thinking. You got. Ah. You gotta yeah, hold back some. Like you're gonna lose all your. You're gonna you're gonna lose your your advantage, your professional <gasps> advantage, giving away all your tips. No, never. That's the thing with design. There's room for everybody and yeah, every kind of designer. That's don't the look at each other like competition. That doesn't uh, <laughs> that is worried. Yeah. And if you are feeling insecure, that's okay too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You've got to build that confidence. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Oh, actually, what am I doing? I have it as paragraph styles already. Okay, I might do one more spread and then before our time is up, I'll show a little bit of type finessing and then uh, I'll end on just like the mock-ups and, and how that works. That sounds... Great. Okay. Can I, I do have, I do have one resource for you, by the way, that you Please. probably know of. 
Have you heard of wor <laughs> wordmark, wordmarkit.it? Yeah, you know that you can okay, steal the types. No, but show it. It's great. Do I that. Know. I don't know. You just try to make me feel better. Oh, no, yeah, Paul, but it is really value. helpful. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Paul. You could show your website. I <laughs> Add value to the to the whole forum. Come on. <laughs> anyway, so I like it because you're you, you could see the actual fonts on your on your laptop. So all I did yeah. is kind of type this in, of course, Shanti, and then you can you can search, of course, filter as well. But I like that it kind of shows me all my fonts mm -hmm. in a just m much more viewable fashion rather than a drop down list and having to scroll over the, each uh, font. So that's yeah, my two that's cents. yeah. Super duper handy. So if you guys are designing logos and you're new to the logo designing thing and maybe even not sure what direction to go, type the name of the business in and just like have a stare at it. Cause some instinctually will feel right and you can gravitate towards it. And it might help you make some decisions. It's, it's a great site. Oh, cool. <laughs> good, good. All right, back to you. Okay, so what are we up to? Our last one. Oh, actually, you know, might as well bring it back to America. We're going to do Alice Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that one. Oh, Dallas. Lock it into my grid. In just having a look at my pages in general, you can see that I, well, actually, maybe I can just minimize my pages and show it better. Let's do this. So looking at how color sort of streams through it, you don't want to set it up so it's like a really obvious pattern. So it's like black color, black color, white color, you know, you, you sort of mess around with it and see what works within the spread. You don't want to put two colors that don't look nice together. Mm -hmm. um, you want one that complements it, but as you scroll through, there's a lot of change going on um, with a big, you know, splash in the middle and then here. So I might add uh, perhaps black here because I don't want it to always just be those two colors. And at the top, I did have a black. So I need to bring that back to create that pattern. Um, you can also see that I haven't really used white space as you would normally. So if I looked in this one, Using white space made sense because this time was all about peace and, and meditation and there was a lot of airiness to what was going on. So it felt right to sort of do that inner realm and then that peace with that white space. With glam rock, it's about the intensity. So I really embraced that. And so anytime I would be using white space, I use black to show that. Um, but saying that there is spacing, there is room to breathe on every page but the color intensity, I've dialed it up just for this one. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into how, just how different uh, the two magazines look, but there's still, there's still a, like common, like the fundamentals are still there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like the design fundamentals are still there. Yeah, so I mean, if I did end up going and doing hair metal, <laughs> Psycho yeah. Billy, it, it would still work out for the next one, even though I'd have a completely different palette and illustration yeah. style. Okay, so let's get my pages. My A master. Oh. What was it called? Psycho Billy? Is that what you called it earlier? Psycho Billy? Yeah, yeah, it's one one word. It's, um, I think, like, the, the, the example that I can only reach for is the cramps. Uh, okay. Also, I get schooled on these things by my music friend, Alex Daly, who like makes me sound far cooler than I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Reverend Horton heats under that as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, huh. Haven't heard a lot of these bands under the psychobilly. Yep. Yeah. But the aesthetic of it is like, amazing. Was, the what? <laughs> the aesthetic the of it is amazing. Yeah, exactly. So. And that's honestly why I think so many like designers and artists like glam rock and like um, like David Bowie and stuff. Yeah. Just visually like pretty fun and stunning and fun to play with. Yeah. Well, it was spectacle, and I think he um, was the first person to do skits. Also, a tidbit that I know only from my friend, my music friend. Who's this? 
uh, I have a music friend called Alex. So I think Alice Cooper did skits on stage and it was oh. like bringing theatrical performance into music. Oh. And then it also led into uh, things like uh, the Rocky Horror Show. Ah, yeah, I could, I could see that. Mm -hmm. Let's jive on in. Yeah, the black and blue uh, work pretty well together. That's like an electric blue too, is what it looks like. At least it on definitely my is. Yeah. I think that, because I can sort of see the stream, the colors are a bit softened. The red is a little bit more browner than what I'm seeing. So I suggest that if you want to see what this looks like at the end, um, I, I'll release it on the hands sometime today Sweet. and yeah we we only have probably about 10 minutes but we also okay. have some we have some cool things coming up for indesign that we can't talk about oh. i don't know if you're on the pre-release or you're in the i feel like you're in the know you are in the know aren't you i am so the we could both be vague <laughs> and say hey it's pretty exciting so yeah you, it's you some know. really cool stuff yeah uh i mean does one say themes i don't know but yeah there's really great stuff coming out with InDesign. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, like the only hint that I would give is like in an increasingly remote world, I think InDesign's yeah. doing some cool stuff to help people yeah. connect. Yeah, exactly. You got your talking points down. I'm into it. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Uh, Alexandra Daly wants to see your dog before you look out. Oh, God. She's sleeping, or he. I don't know. He is, he is sleeping. He's it, sleeping. He'll, he'll turn up, up at the very end. He'll okay. say goodbye. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got 10 minutes. All right, so I can do this, and then I'll quickly show the cleanup, and then I'll show the mock-ups. Cool. Oh yeah, we're going with a giant Alice quote. Yeah, cool. And then because this quote is so big, um, I can definitely tell that I can't if you look at it, it's like hanging over and that, that looks a bit strange. So what I might do is increase the number of columns so that it has a bit more of a base to anchor it down to the page. And then let it settle there. And then that, that sort of works a bit more and we can choose where we align it gets a bit closer. So I'll put the final little column lines on it. And then we'll talk about finesse. All right, we'll leave it. We did 12 pages of it. <gasps> I know. That's I mean, cool. I have like a weird amount of things to admit because I love Alice Cooper's boots so much. I, I imagined them on the photo that I used as a reference. So I, where is that? The original Alice. Yeah. So he didn't have his ah. actual boots showing, but he's known for these boots. And I was sad that I couldn't find the right pose with the right boots. So I just mm -hmm. put some, put some boots on him. Very cool. <laughs> into it and you're wearing the glam rock boots that are on the cover right you're wearing them right yeah, now absolutely always oh, yeah. sparkling red he likes time to design put on gotta gotta put on my design boots and get, get <laughs> yeah. to work yeah, it doesn't feel right otherwise okay uh okay so finesse is like one of the things that you don't do until you've got a bit of a sign off from your client because if you go along and you um kern or track out all of your lines and then they give you new coffee. Oh, it hurts. So what what you want to do is like make sure you've got 
the sign off, then go for it. So I often don't finesse until, you know, the FA file is labeled, even though that's a bit of a curse in itself. So uh, what will you do with kerning? And I'm gonna try and get in as much as possible so I can really show it. So you look for areas that have sort of strange gaps and you can either kern in or kern out. So I'm going to option and just kern out and kern in. And this is a bit of a manual process but you're just trying to get them to be a little bit softer and you don't need to do it for everything. And unless you're trying to go for a really justified look, you don't need to get too worried about it. But just getting it in a little bit more so it's not as jagged on the edges. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, so here there's a bit of jagger on the Mick Jagger. Whoa. How did that happen? Because you don't, <laughs> none of these words are hyphenated either. So you can no. end up with. Yeah, similar. I definitely tried to not use the hyphenation. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes you can't avoid what's going to happen. So that jagger is going to be a bit jagged. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Bringing it in. So this is the difference between something that looks finished and something that looks like finesse. So make sure if you have the time, really, really get going on that. Joshua would like to. Joshua Quinn would like to say thanks for ruining his weekend because now he wants to make his own zine. <gasps> Please he do. He, he didn't really say that. He just said he's inspired to make one. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh well, if you do, what was his name? Joshua. Joshua Quinn. Joshua Quinn, send it to me. I'd love to see it. Now, when you when you publish this out, I, I don't know if you're at that step or are going to get to it at all. Um, I probably won't publish it on air, but I'll publish yeah. it very soon okay. afterwards. Um, I are can you do just going to you going to yep. do the publish online method? Uh, no. What? So I have built out a Behance page, oh, so okay. that will hopefully have these video links and just a little bit of explanation and um, have them all mocked up for you all. But okay. Yeah, just because I wanted to curate it a little bit more. Okay, cool. Publish out is great. Sounds good. <laughs> um, it'll also appear on my website, but the hands will come first. This is a good one. Actually, maybe I'll show you before and after by just duplicating it. So this is before, which is going through. If you've got any little characters like this A hanging off a cliff, you might want to drop it down. And then what it's done is popped out my my of. So I'm also going to drop that down. And then I can grab them all and just kern it out a little bit. Ah. And luckily this is the last step. So ah. it's, it's not a big deal, but. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's so, good. Yeah, so it's like before, after. Yeah. So little changes make a really big difference that's easy so i'll finish out maybe this page and then i'll show the finished product and i'll i'll show you some mock-ups and things like that Sweet. uh just in the same way that pen tool is pretty zen i find kerning really great because you can do it on autopilot you don't really need to think your eyes and your hands end up doing it for you Also, thank you for uh, the bone nerd. I don't know why, where people come up with their names, by the way. Like how? <laughs> Anyways, we got another entry in, and I want to thank you uh, for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, where does this name come from? Of the blending modes. That's cool. Yeah, I'm just showing it real fast because I said. Yeah, I go do it. I don't know how to say your name. How to add some pepper to the bacon? Good job, little pepper. Got the butter in there. Great job. MB. Excellent. Back nice. to you, Shanti. No, and, of course. That was great. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. We got it. We got a full screen design. <gasps> Yay. Yes. And I've like yeah. cleaned up some of my type and got 
it's electric, it's doing all those things. So I might just like go and show the mockups for now. Let's go have a look. And we have uh, about one minute. Yeah, for sure. This is just going to be a show and tell, basically. So mocked up. Have a look full screen. Okay, so things that you didn't really get to see is my back cover. So what I did was uh, I didn't want to put an artist on the front and the back because it's a whole error and I didn't want it to be about one person. So picking icons, so makeup and boots, back and forth, front. Uh, what have we got here? So just, you know, working with mockups that you can get them from wherever you want just to bring it to life. I love like the shadowing and lights that's going on in so many mockups these days showing it all together, sort of coming together and it's got quite a color story going on. And then here are our spreads that we made today. Here we've got Beautiful. Yeah. Shanti, yeah. you're amazing. <laughs> love your work. Cornell says love these. I think they're fantastic. Uh, putting them in, this mo in the mock-up context really helps a lot too. So thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, to bring them to life. I don't want to get cut off, but we might get cut off. So. Okay. <laughs> Shanti, thank you so much. You're amazing. I can't tell you how, how big of a fan I am. Just thank you so much. Everybody give a round of applause. I just appreciate you so much, Shanti. Thank you. <laughs> thank Thanks, you. guys. Pleasure to be XD here. XD Daily Creative Challenge up next. Yeah.